Thank you to Simply Safe for spot oh, oh, sponsoring this video. I'm out here looking for three things right now. Weeds, soybean aphids, and potential hail damage. Most of our soybeans actually look pretty dang good. These are andros here, they're a little bit thinner, but for as late as they got planted, these things look not bad at all. They're not easy to see, but those little greenish yellow neon colored things right there, those are soybean aphids. This is not bad, there's not a lot here yet, but they're here. What they do is they feed on the bottom of the young trifoliates like this, and they suck all the moisture out of the plant. Once they get to a certain point, we have to spray them or they will literally starve the plant of all of its moisture. But it's not worth spraying until we reach a certain threshold. They're not bad right now. We're nowhere near that threshold, but the thing is that they double, triple, quadruple in population very, very quickly. I don't see volunteer corn popping up here, which means we probably smoked that out of here with our first spray pass. I'm not seeing water hemp coming up, which is good, but the little ones that are underneath will pop up eventually. And I don't see hail damage here, but there was some hail damage in the area, so I'm keeping an eye open for it. We have a lot of acres in this area. Here's our spot that we replanted a little bit ago. There's a few uh, water hemp plants there. But it's good to see this stuff coming up anyway. Oh yeah, this is dirty. Here's an example of what happens if you don't get out into the areas with herbicides soon enough. This is why we're always trying to keep up with the chemicals. But a big part of the reason this is so dirty is because this did not get tillage here. Because when we came and ran tillage this spring during planting, this was standing full of water. Can you tell that the weed control wasn't quite as good? for aphids there. I didn't see much for weeds. I haven't found any hail damage yet, so as of now, things look pretty good. Well, it's not so much later and we're getting what we needed. I don't know how much we're supposed to get out of this, but hopefully it's a good solid inch or more than that. It's coming down pretty good now. This will take some time. We ended up with two big shots of rain yesterday. One in the morning, one in the afternoon and it ended up equaling a little bit over an inch. And it came with this super schnazzy haircut. So we're sitting pretty good right now, being the end of July or towards the end of July here with a fresh inch of rain down. It sounds like it's gonna get a lot hotter this week. We're gonna be up into the 90s, maybe mid 90s even next week. So it's good to have that shot of rain. We're gonna be seeing a lot of growth out of the crops. Onyx is moving his go-kart trailer into position for later so he can wash his go-kart in the trailer. We got some races in Wisconsin next week we're gonna take him out to. You can watch for that on the Between the Rows channel. That channel should be linked down below for anybody interested. There's what I'm looking for. We're not finishing this bin today. We're gonna finish that one. We got the majority of the floor swept up, pushed into the center here, and what we're gonna do now is start this sweep up just to run it over to where it needs to sit when we fill the bin. And then we'll get in here with shovels, start up the center sump, and just start pushing everything into there. We don't always completely sweep the floor and clean it up just like this, but we try to, otherwise you end up with old grain on the bottom sometimes. And this year, this grain is worth a lot more than it has been for several years, so we wanna get as much out of here as we possibly can. another time.
Oh, that's always fun. You want to move the gates and I'll make sure the slides are opening and closing? Yeah. And then we'll find out which ones are not working. We need these to open and close all the way. And frequently in this bin there's an issue. Like this one right here that isn't moving at all. Is that all the way open with the center one? Probably not. The this thing is, we need to get those fixed better. Yeah. Because the center one's not opening all the way and then the one right next to it doesn't move at all. Okay, you have to work on that one next to it. We've worked on that one next to it about five times, I think. They're all a little sticky. Yeah. It's an unfortunate design with a shaft that runs all the way from the center out and there's like a clamp on there. But we can't get to it without pulling up part of the floor, so that, we, it sucks. All right, bin number two. for the day to finish off loading the truck. So we got two floors clean there. This one's got a dirty floor, but we might leave it because there's not a lot on the bottom of it at all. And we're gonna be putting corn back in that one. So I'm gonna go see what the status is back here. So luckily there is still grain in here that this sweep is gonna go around. I don't know that it's gonna be enough to fill the semi truck, but also luckily, We've been shoveling as we go in here. Normally we do shovel as we go as we load the trucks, but what happened is dad was gone down south last winter, early spring, and I was trying to load as many trucks as I could as fast as I could because I had drivers and I couldn't keep up when three or four bins all got to the bottom at once. I can't be running around and keep up with three or four bins and a shovel. So I just let the sweeps go because there's only so much one guy can do. Now, being inside of a grain bin is no joke. There's a lot of dangerous things in here. Moving augers, some so you can get into. Grain dust is dangerous. That's why I got my mask on here. Uh-oh, lost the filter. Now my phone's ringing. There's also a legitimate danger of being buried in the grain. There's a lot of unfortunate accidents that happen every year. So for the kids watching this, stay out of the grain bins unless you're in there with mom, dad, grandpa, whoever. A lot of you know, if you've watched, we've done some recent fundraising for the grain bin safety. Uh, not awareness necessarily, but to give back to the local fire departments. We had a country music concert. We're still adding up everything with that because there was a lot of different ways that income was coming in. When it's all said and done, I think we're going to be right around $50,000. There is a GoFundMe link down below for those of you who want to pitch in and weren't able to yet. Otherwise, we have got a whole bunch of these shirts left. Got a grain bin on there says this isn't the cornhole you want to sink in. Kind of a little play on words. You can find this down below in our apparel link. Every dollar of profit, every penny of profit from this is going to go back into that fund to give back to fire departments and first responders for rescue training and rescue gear for grain bins. So check that out. Make sure you guys buy some of these shirts. They're available in white as well. We've got an abundance of them. We need to get rid of all the profits go towards that. You can even cut the sleeves off of yours if you want, like I did. It makes it look like you're strong. Getting down there. I don't know where the truck's at. Dad's watching the truck, so I don't know how much room is left in it. Well, it's shut off, so I'm hoping that that means the truck is full. There's probably... At least a third, maybe a half of a truck left in here between the floor and that pile. <sighs> At least there's fresh air out here. It's full? Pretty close. How much is left in there? There's a third to a half left in there, I bet. Okay. Between the floor and what's left in the pile. Okay, good deal. It's a little late now, he's not going to make it down to the ethanol plant in time, so he's just going to swing that around and park it for the time being. Are you getting it shined up? Yeah, but I can't get the seat cushion. Oh, you can't get the seat cushion back on? No, just 
As I mentioned, Onyx has got some big races out in Wisconsin next week, so he's shining it all up. Same we, one as last year. Same one as last year, yep, yep. So we will have that on the second channel. You guys see that open shed door? It was open just like that in the middle of January. And luckily, that temperature sensor right there saved our butt. You see that little water temp sensor? There was one just like this in our house that went off and let us know that our basement was starting to flood after that storm that wrecked our shed a couple of months ago. Both times the Simply Safe system called and alerted us and said, hey, the temperature in your shop is getting way too cold and the next time it said we have water in our basement. I didn't even believe it and I was home. Sure enough, there was water in the basement. They've also got panic buttons, motion detectors, glass break sensors, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide alarms, indoor cameras, outdoor cameras, doorbell cameras, handy little solar panels that you plug into the cameras. You name it, they've got it. So if you want to outfit your home or cabin or place of business or wherever to make sure that nobody's breaking in and stealing your Minneapolis Moline G750s or your fish tanks or your spatulas or your folding chairs, whatever. All you got to do is go to simplysafe.com slash millennial farmer and you can get it shipped directly to you right now. You can set it all up yourself. I did it myself in like 15 minutes. No hassles whatsoever. If anything goes wrong, they will dispatch the local police or the fire department 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are no long-term contracts. It costs less than a dollar a day and you can get 20% off right now when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month for free. All you got to do again is visit simplysafe.com slash millennial farmer and you can be well on your way to knowing exactly when your Amazon packages arrive just like us now back to our regularly scheduled programming video dad's gonna take off and head home I'm gonna run in the house and say hi to the girls before I update you guys on what our most recent project is now going to be let's check on how things are going here too oh look at that Kitties are getting big. Let me out. That is our 18,000 gallon LP tank for the grain dryer. It's been a good investment. We we're able to get bulk delivery loads out here. We we're able to oftentimes contract LP cheaper and be able to get the full trucks out here out of season and hold a large amount of storage. So it's been a good investment. We just bought another one. I got it on a Steffes auction last night on an online auction. It's up in North Dakota, so we've got to get trucking lined up yet. But we're not sure if it's going to go here on the west side of the tank, if it'll fit here, or if it's got to go back on the other side. But you can see I need some broadleaf killer and or a lawnmower down here. I chose the mower. I basically have this place looking like the fairways at Augusta. I don't know where Augusta is. I really don't know anything about golf, but it sounds like it would have a nice lawn. There's the good one right there. That's a good mouser. I think tomorrow I'll get the bat wing out and start cleaning everything else up around here. Some of the little evergreen trees out here are gonna have to be either taken down or moved, but we got a spot in our grove that in about 10 days, we got a local tree guy coming out to clean up. They got all ripped apart in the storm, so. He's gonna basically clean it down to nothing, and we're gonna have to move some trees in there and fill it in. Look at that. Oh, safety switch. It's a piece of an old grain bin. <laughs> How did that get there? It's Becky and I's anniversary, so I'm gonna take her out somewhere for dinner, see if I can find a steak and a, a Dr. Pepper, because I can't drink any alcohol right now, so I can't have myself a cold beer because I actually did have pancreatitis like two weeks ago, so I'm not drinking any alcohol right now. I don't know why I had pancreatitis, but I'm gonna try to make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the morning. The dogs say good morning. There, is my camera better now? I bump the settings all the time. I think I gotta change back. 
They're excited. They're all wound up. What's in there, Didge? A squirrel, like usual? Anna, you don't care at all, do you? Anna just gets wound up because Didge is excited. Get it, Didge! It's enough playing with the dogs. I better get to work. Engine oil is good. <laughs> I scared the cat. Yeah, I think I scared your kitty. She didn't claw you though? No. Oh, good. Oh, it hurts. It hurts so bad. Ow. Ow. Normally, we have the tank full at home. We can fill up the trucks at home, but with the shed situation, we're gonna need to move the tanks because the shed's gonna be bigger and head out to the east where the tanks are at, so we're gonna completely redo all that. So we need the tanks empty so that we can move them around easier. More easily, is that proper grammar? Gooder grammar? That was only one side. That's a half a truck. It would have been $900 to fill this whole truck up, and this truck doesn't have large tanks. This is why shipping costs and inflation is out of control. I mean, I guess inflation, honestly, is only at what, what, 8%, they say? Yeah. Yeah, sure it is. I will believe that when me poop turns purple and smells like rainbow sherbet. That's a Super Troopers reference. I made it PG for the kids. We only have about four, three and a half to four more loads after this one to haul down here to the ethanol plant on this contract, which is good because by the time we clean up all the floors and the grain bins and everything and finish cleaning out everything we've got, that's probably about what we have left. And then we're going to be all done hauling grain until harvest comes in a couple of months and we end up with a whole bunch more. I gotta make a convenient pit stop here for a few items that we need right now. Needed some windshield washer fluid, a bunch of brake clean, new mask, some different odd sized bolts that we needed for some special projects we got going on. Now just one final very important stop before I leave town here and make the extremely long 40 mile ride home. I went with the grilled chicken, I know. It's better for my pancreas. Beans were taken off the floors of the grain bins. It's a little bit easier with two people here, especially since we want to pull from that far south bin, which is a long walk and it's not easy to get in and out of the door. I'm gonna wait until dad gets home to start reloading that truck, because we're not in a hurry. So in the meantime, I think I'll get the bat wing fired up and start working on cutting some grass. Oh, the big rig is in the way. I'm gonna have to move that. Fold the booms up. Needs a little choke to keep it alive. Kind of like a like a kitten at a milk pail, but I can't start it with only one hand. It wasn't struggling this bad last week when I used it, it ran like a top. It's out of the way anyways. piece of fence was down here I just didn't know exactly where at but it's now I know it's right here I did not get it into the mower it uh, I did get it under the tires but I caught it before it got into the mower 
probably make note of that and that and get these out of here later. But for now, I'm gonna keep mowing and probably let the grass grow up and maybe get into it again someday. This whole area down here, where these trees are on the east side of the yard and even actually where the shed is, used to be cattle yard. So there's a creek that runs right back here behind me. This is kind of the edge of the yard. And this used to all be cattle in here. Now it's just our own private tree nursery and an area for Onyx to make four-wheeler and side-by-side -side jumps. This isn't exactly the kind of work that makes us any money on the farm or helps us be any more efficient or anything, but we take a little pride in trying to keep things nice and it just seems like this whole summer, this whole spring and into midsummer here has gotten so backed up just with trying to pick up buildings and catch up with spring work because the weather was awful and in a couple days in the hospital with pancreatitis and we had a week-long road trip for a wedding that we we took some family time for and now it just finally feels like maybe maybe next couple weeks here we can start getting caught up and up to a normal routine you guys want to see the impressive flexibility of this woods bat wing i do difficult than it looked like because I had to run the clutch, the brake, and the deck height, and the camera. That looks a lot nicer. And we'll be able to kind of see and walk around, figure out which side of that tank, the new LP tank, is going on. Well, Dad is here now. I saw him coming up the driveway and I'm kind of finished with the spot that I wanted done, so gonna probably jump inside of a grain bin and get sweaty so just want to thank you guys for watching because you've already seen that and I'm just not gonna deal with the camera for the rest of the day one final exciting side note at least for people that follow between the rows maybe a lot of you guys won't care about this but the between the rows people and the race fans will for those who know who Cletus McFarland is he's gonna have a big race down at Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee called the Bristol 1000 there's gonna be about 30 a uh, mixture between just big YouTubers and professional drivers there running that race. I'm one of them. So I'm pretty excited. I'm going to be going out to Bristol Motor Speedway again, this time racing a Ford Crown Victoria. I think I'm going to be pretty underwhelmed with the power and the handling of that compared to the dirt modified and the late models that I've run through my career. But it's going to be pretty fun. Haley and Brian Deegan are going to be out there, Roman Atwood. Um, there's some really big names there. Derek from Vice Grip Garage is going to be running it. Cletus himself is going to be running it. Uh, you can check Cletus' channel, the Cletus McFarland YouTube channel for that. If you're interested in attending, they are trying to sell 50,000 seats to that. So you can actually be there live. There's plenty of room if you guys want to come watch that live. Otherwise, you can stream that. That information is going to be over on Cletus' channel. I don't have the details of that memorized yet, but you'll be able to watch that. And I will be making at least one video for our second channel over on Between the Rows. That's going to be exciting. So tune in. Check that out September 4th. Okay, bye. What do you want? Mom, well, me and Grandpa, we're gonna talk about going to Outlander. He thinks he can take me. This kid likes racing too. <laughs>